Welcome to my channel, this is Tony, and as you can see from the reflection in my oven that I'm wearing PJs because it's PJ Saturday. But that's not the reason why I'm doing this video. My oven is not working. I want to bake some pizza, and I noticed that uh, after I smelled some gas, that the igniter was not getting hot enough for the oven to ignite the propane. So, I have a problem. I know how to fix it though, and I want you to watch this video because if you have the same problem that I have, I will at least get you fixed. That way when the part comes in a week from now, you don't have to sit there and starve and not eat your pizza. So let's get right into it and fix this problem. I'm gonna show you real quick what's happening. So if I go to bake and I go to 425, because that's where my pizza needs to be baked at, I go to start, I'm gonna mimic the door being closed by hitting this button right here in the upper right hand side. Light goes out and the igniter comes on and usually about 10 to 15 seconds after the igniter comes on, the propane will light off and it will start heating up your oven. But that's not happening. The igniter just stays lit like that and all it's doing is emitting propane but it's not actually lighting it off. Now this is the second time I've had to change the igniter on this Samsung oven. Last time was about three years ago and I'm gonna drop the link on the left side of the video showing you what you need to order from Amazon. It's been about a minute since I hit that igniter for the oven bake cycle and nothing happened. It just glowed and I started to smell propane so I shut it off. So the igniter is underneath this panel here which I'll show you in a second how to replace that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the broiler igniter from up here and we're gonna take that one out and put it down here because they're the exact same thing. So I'm gonna show you how to replace and take that out and then we're gonna show you how to take it and put it in here. So essentially I'm showing you how to replace both the top broiler igniter and the bottom bake oven igniter. But before we do that, I just wanna show you that the broiler igniter does work. So I'm gonna hit broil right here, hit start. Mimic the door being closed again, and you're gonna see the igniter up there start to heat up, and then you'll see the oven broiler pop off and ignite. This should take about 15 to 20 seconds. There it goes, it's getting nice and hot. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's what should be happening, and it's not happening at the bottom. So let's take the igniter out, We'll let it cool off and then we'll get going. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the oven out from the wall because that's what we have to do to access that top broiler igniter. You like the pants, I know you do. I could easily put on something a little more classy, but you know what? It's still PJ Saturday, so we're gonna go ahead and work this. Now, I'm gonna pull this out just nice and gently like that. Looking good, looking good. All right, perfect. That's probably far enough. Next thing you wanna do is make sure you turn off your gas valve, which is right there, and then I unplugged the electrical cord from the outlet. Now we're ready to work on this, and we gotta remove a panel on the back side over here. Okay, we have some screws to take off and some panels. The first panel you gotta take off is this guy right here. There's one screw in the middle, and then there's a screw over here at the top, and over here at the top, okay? Now once that's done, we gotta take off this panel right here, which is this screw, so one, two, up here, three, four, five, or five, and then six. So if you take off all of those screws, Nine total, that whole thing will pop off. Let's get it going. Oh look, I don't know what this is, but it probably should have been removed. Now the only reason why we took off this back panel was because we have to take off this connector right here. So it's above this transformer looking thing right here. You just squeeze these two ends right here. Bada boom, bada bang. 
And now just kind of let that be free because now we're going to go from the inside and we're going to pull that out. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and put the panels back on because we're not going to come back for this for about another week until the new part comes in. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall. Okay, so now what we're going to do is there's a little plate right here where the wires come out of. This is the top broiler igniter. So I'm going to unscrew that little plate. Screw drops down. It's okay. No big deal. And that plate's going to kind of come out. The plate looks like this. Okay. Put the screw off the side. Do not lose these. Now we can go ahead and we can pull this connector out. Like that, boom, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, we have to take the igniter off of the broiler uh, vent where the propane comes out right here. The way that happens is that we gotta take this plate off right here first, and then this screw right here, which holds it on. So, there's a screw here, here, so right in front. Let me pull you out here a second. So we got a screw here, we got a screw right here, then we got the same thing on this side, a screw there and a screw a bit th back there. And then again, that screw right there. So let's go ahead and take all of these off. Now this whole assembly should lift off of this right here and come down. Oh, there's a screw right here yet. Sorry about that. Right there at the front of the where the broiler is, where the propane comes out. Let's go ahead and grab that out there too. All these screws are the same, so it doesn't matter. You won't get them confused. Okay, we'll pull this out. Boom, just like that. Okay, here's the broiler. All we're gonna do is take off these two screws right here. This is what holds the igniter on. There is a nut behind it. Just use your finger to hold the nut. Okay. Now there might be a washer between these two. There is not, that's good. So it's just that. So now here's the igniter we're gonna put at the bottom of the oven and replace it with this. Let's go ahead first though and put this back in there. So at the back there is gonna slide the broiler onto that nozzle back there like that, boom, boom, boom. And then put a screw here at the very front that can kind of hold everything in place. There it is right there. Okay, we're locked in. So now do not use the broiler in this configuration because it won't do anything. There's no igniter for the broiler for it to work. So let me go put the rest of these screws in here and then we'll get to the bottom. All right, now we're at the bottom portion. So there's two screws in the back right here. And oh shoot, you fell. I got you, I got you. Okay, and right here, go ahead and pull these out. You still wanna fall on me, I gotta move you this way. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and take these out. Take your hands like this, lift up. There's two little, two little clippies here in the front. Set that on top. And now we have more screws to take off. We gotta take this plate off right here. So we got one screw, two, three, and actually it's just two screws. So, this one right here. This one right here. And it's gonna lift off like that. Move this up top too. Okay, 
Now here is our bottom igniter right there. So again, we gotta take this whole thing out, okay? And then I think this is, a, there's a screw here in the front. Right there's one. We have this screw in the back here and we can go ahead and pull this out. Get this one right here in the front, the bottom here. I think the top one's easier to change, if I do say so myself. Now, sometimes you gotta take out the bottom tray, that warming tray, to undo that connector. I'm gonna try and do that without taking that tray out, even though it's not a big deal, you know, but anyway. Okay, I gotta take out the bottom tray to access the connector. All right, so here's the bottom here. Warming tray's out. It's this connector right here you gotta pull out. Again, same thing. Pinch the sides and pull it, and that's gonna free it like that. Now, since I had that removed, you might have to wiggle that a little bit. Boom, there you go. The igniter just came out. Now I can replace the other one with this one. All right, here's the old one. Just gonna take it off of here. Again, it's held by two screws or two bolts and a nut and two nuts. Take this off like so. Okay, now there is a little piece of washer or a little spacer here. That stays right there. So this is the bad one. Here's the good one. We know it works because it worked up top. We're gonna put our two screws in here. Okay, here's my nut. I'm gonna go ahead and take a pair of uh, uh, adjustable wrench and tighten these up. But they should tighten up pretty good just with your hand. Okay, there we go. Okay, they're actually pretty tight. I'm not gonna worry about putting a wrench on there because they won't go any tighter. Now we're gonna drop this back inside and hook it back up. All right, now we're gonna install this back in here. So first thing you wanna do is just make sure you have the connector down where the warming tray is. Then you wanna kind of maneuver this part underneath this little lip right here, like that, okay? This can be a little tricky. And you wanna try and find where that pipe sticks out and you're gonna slide it down in there. And we're gonna verify um, from the bottom to make sure we're actually in where it's supposed to be. And you're gonna know when this hole lines up with where you had to put that bolt at. There it is, right there, okay. So now we can go ahead and we can put our screws back in. Again, just verify underneath to make sure that that pipe is in its nozzle where it has to go. Line up, baby, come on, there we go. It goes in one way, don't worry about that. You gotta master the one hand, there we go. Boom, awesome. Now we can go ahead and put this plate back in, it goes on top, just drops in like that, real simple. Then we'll go ahead and put this pan back in. Remember it has these two clippies on the front, here and here. Angle that down, slide that in, and then go ahead and put your two screws on that. These are the longer screws, they look like this, okay? These are the only ones that are kind of the oddball screws out of all of these. So the only thing you should have left over right now is the one burner or igniter 
right here, and then two screws and two nuts. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the oven back out just to plug it back in and turn the gas back on. Oven's back in. Reset the timer real quick. It is 5.16 p.m. Set. Okay. All right, now the moment of truth. I'm gonna just see, make sure we have gas here. Turn the stove on. Okay, we have gas. That's a good thing. Turn it off. Now let's do it again. Let's go to bake. Remember, do not use broil because broil does not have the igniter. We're gonna hit bake, 425, start. Dummy out my switch over here. Let's see it ignite. You should actually hear it now. Okay, she's starting to glow. You can see the glow down there, right? Should be about 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds before it lights off. Any second. There it goes. It just went. I can hear it. I can't, you can kind of see the flame down there, a little bit of blue. That's it. We fixed it. And there we go. We got the oven fixed. We can't use the broiler, but that's okay. We rarely ever use the broiler, but now we can actually bake stuff in there. So I'm at 245 degrees already. Before this, it wasn't going above like 150. It was just kind of staying stagnant. So I'm gonna get my pizza, put it in there, and enjoy my dinner. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me a thumbs up if it helped you. Subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. See ya. And my oven is not working. So, hey Yeti, what's up, Bubby? Come here, come here. Okay, hi, yeah, okay, okay, you're a good boy, uh-huh, he's a good boy, he's a good boy. Okay, all right, anyway.